Okay, and welcome to some Anarchy Online. I just got an email recently from Funcom uh, that they made a major update to Anarchy Online, and it's actually been quite a few years. This game was kind of stagnating. I haven't played it in quite some time. I think the last time I checked in and tried it out was in 2012. I did play it at launch, and I've played it on and off throughout the years, and by on and off I mean about two or three year gap in between. But I've always tried it out because it's a very interesting game. It's a bit different in the way you level up in case you're used to World of Warcraft or post-World of Warcraft world. It's very different from that. It's not a quest-based objective game that you go out and play. The graphics, as you can see, aren't the best around either. But they're enough, like Minecraft, to spark your imagination and you can enjoy the game anyway. So right off the bat, we could choose from these four different breeds. This one over here, the big guy, he's actually supposed to be either male or female, but I mean, come on, look at that face, that's a male. Um, and these are your solidus. Essentially, they're your all-around class, or not all-around class, all-around breed. They're good for pretty much any profession that you may want to throw at them. And then you have your op effects here, who are good for, excuse me, they're good for agility and that kind of stuff, but they they suffer a bit when it comes to, I believe, health. And then there's your nano mage, but they have some good overall uh, nano skills. However, the nano mages here, they're actually really good at nano skills and stuff that would be for a caster type class in this game. However, they are very weak. But a lot of this is for the default game, because once you get into the expansion packs, they have certain things that allow them to even out towards the end. So you can make up for their deficiencies. However, this game is free to play if you decide you want to try it out. You'll get the full entire base game. And it's really good too. It's got tons of content. Let's you go up to level 200. If you want to go past that point, then you're going to have to go to uh, Shadowlands Expansion Pack and Alien Invasion and Legacy of Xan and Lost Eden. Nodal Wars is another booster pack that came out, but that one actually is included with the base game as well. And what that allows you to do is world PvP with towers in a guild versus guild type environment fight. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose somebody. I think I'm going to go with a fixer for this video because I like their burst ability and they, you know, they're pretty quick. So let's go with Aatrox. Aatrox. They're actually a pretty good class for that because I hear their survivability is good Please for when you get to level 200. Appearance. Although I doubt I'm going to be taking this character that high. Let's just go with the default one, keep this simple. They have some simple options. A little bit more lighter than World of Warcraft's options, which is pretty amazing because that one's light in and of itself, but this one's even less. But you remember, have to remember that this game came out in 2001, so hence you're going to see some really terrible graphics. And I don't know what the hell it is with the Aatrox. They have the most ugliest face I have ever seen in a game. I mean, look at this. What is that? What happened to this guy's eye? <laughs> I mean, ugh, that's terrible. We'll just go with the default face for now. Let's just go short. I want to feel like I'm running faster. Um, yeah, these are the different classes that you can choose from. Whoa. My bad. And there's quite a few of them. 14 of them, to be exact. Two of them, the Keeper and the Shade, those you can only access if you have the Shadowlands expansion. Now, see what happens is once you upgrade your account to Shadowlands or any of the other paid expansions... And by the way, they do have a pass where you could just buy a $19 and get all the expansions plus a month free of the game as well. So that's something that you might want to check into if you decide to upgrade. But once you do upgrade, your account is locked that way. You can't go back to a Froob status and get free game time and just be limited to the standard uh, content anymore. You know, once you get boosted to a veteran account, you're going to be forced to stay with that veteran account. So that's one thing. And it costs $15 a month in order to play the game. Anyway, the classes on here are very different. You have Metaphysicist who gets three pets, a healing pet, Mez pet, and they also get their attack pet. And on top of that, they also get their own direct damage nukes that they can do, and they get buffs. Every class is going to want this class to buff them up at one point. They're going to want Mokums, which is a very nice uh, ability. And in this game, unlike in World of Warcraft, if you want the next level of your ability, you need to level up, and then it's awarded to you. In this game, it's not like that. You need to buy them through nano crystals, and those nano crystals, you can get them earlier than your level would normally permit by buffing up your abilities in the game. So there are some people, like for instance, his pet, instead of running around with a 25 level pet when he's level 25, 
Instead, he could be walking around with a level 75 pet or level 100 pet if he gets twinked enough. So that, that offers that level of replayability if you decide to twink a character. This is another character class. These are the three pet professions that I'll show you. He's a bureaucrat. He gets a lot of calms, red mezes, and he gets the ability to, to do an area of effect mez and an area of effect slow. And he's also able to take over the control of one enemy, a long-term enemy, and keep him as his pet with his other pet, his android there. And he can have a short term. So you can have three people following him around attacking different things. So it's actually really, really interesting class. Very good solo class from what I hear. And then there's also adventures. If you like more of the druid from World of Warcraft, this one's it. This one will change in shapeshift forms. Although not as elegant as World of Warcraft's handling of that is, but it still does it pretty good. Agent allows you to turn into other classes for different times. So it's actually really good because you can turn into a, let's say you could do false profession metaphysicist, or you can do a false profession doctor if you want. However, they're going to have penalties to their abilities. This class is really something I only recommend if you are an advanced player and you're a veteran and you have your second one, or you don't mind the difficulty that it's going to be to break into the game with this character. And of course, there's your doctor and basically your warrior type character here. And you're, of course, your caster class. They don't have a pet, but they directly cast. And they do some very strong AoE nukes. Very powerful character classes. But again, theirs is about medium difficulty. If you can twink them on a second go around of the game by making an alternate character, then that's even more preferred. Finally, there's also the engineer. The engineer class is another pet profession. They get big droids. Eventually, they get a. This is like one of their ultimate pets, but, well, prior if you're a Froob. But it's uh, like more pure white and clean. It's not as dirty as that one. So. They're an interesting class. They have good trade skills. They have good uh, solo ability. However, they are a little bit boring because you're going to be doing most of your damage through your pet and hiding around a corner as he handles the enemy. A much higher level enemy if you do it right. So let's go with a fixer. What they essentially are is a cyberpunk, a hacker, if you will. They are the type of people who are going to have very high run speed because they get buffs for that. They're going to be able to hack a lot of objects. They're going to be able to use a... a a fast travel network called the grid it's but this one is more than just your standard grid that everyone has access to it's a fixer grid it has more points across the world to teleport to as needed on top of that they're able to uh, have a lot of hot buffs to or hot heals you know heal over times so that they can keep themselves and their enemies alive and also or not their enemies they're there <laughs> yes that's real smart let's keep our enemies alive uh, no, to keep their teammates alive. And also on top of that, they have very high evades and they get this really cool armor that's called uh, fixer armor or grid armor. And that gives them massive evades, but at a loss of armor. Okay, let's just make this guy and let's call him grid pillar. Again, this is also another class that you may want to reconsider instead of playing right off the bat because that grid armor, in order to get your hands on it, one, you're going to have to be either very lucky or two, it's going to cost you a metric ton of money in order to be able to get the program to be able to craft it and use it. So it's not exactly new player friendly. All right, the first thing we're going to do before we get in, and in this video, in case I didn't mention it before, what I want to do is do a tutorial and introduction to the new starting area. This is one of the things that they changed in Anarchy Online. Instead of starting in the previous area where you had started before in the first game, if you went back all the way at launch, it was the backyard. And then finally later on in, uh, I think it was Alien Invasion or one of those expansions came out and they changed the starting area to Newbie Island. And now they changed it again to Arete, which I find is even better than Newbie Island. Well, I want to go ahead and show you all the quests that you should do because there are some quests. It's not very long. However, I may break this down to a couple of videos. How, but here's the thing, there's a main line of quests that you have to go through in order to be able to get out of here. However, there's also another quest that are on the side that you can easily skip that have very good, fantastic items for you, especially if you're a noob and you don't have a veteran account and you don't have some other means to rely on, a friend that's going to help gear you up and all that. You want to have the best advantages because this game really does not hold your hand at all. It throws you out there and says, deal with it. And there's not a, a ton of players playing this game, although there has been a resurgence of players from what I've been noticing. But still, you want to get set up and be as self-sufficient as possible. And these items will help you to do exactly that. 
Alright, so with all that talking out of the way, let's try and set up our UI. First things first, this is very similar to other MMORPGs, however, it is a little bit more clunkier because it is an older design. But it's surprisingly efficient for its clunkiness that it is. If you want to make any alterations to this chat window, hit this I button over here. And I recommend that you put auto hide input bar. That way you can make this smaller and yet still get more view when you're not using it. Another thing you want to do is hit actions over here on the left side of your screen and hit help and settings and then go to settings. Enlarge this. And another thing, a lot of the menus, I wish there was a universal button that you can just press to de deactivate this feature. But if I leave my cursor off this GUI here for a few seconds, you see how it dims? Well, when you're looking at stuff, it, it could be a little irritating. So you have to check this on there on each one in order to activate that, which is just irritating. But hey, it is what it is. You could change your voice here, but you don't really use it much at all. Let's go down to video settings. You might want to crank these up. I like it at 75% just for the starting area because when you look in that one direction, it has some issues. But later on, I, I push it all the way up to 100%. All right, and you may be thinking, but shouldn't this game be running super smooth? Again, it's based off DirectX 7. It's a 100% full DirectX 7 game, and it's limited to the technology from 2001. The best thing they possibly had here was text transform and lighting which was a cool technology for its time, but not enough to compensate nor take advantage of any of our GPU features that we have today in our video cards. So it has some issues. Okay, so let's go down to GUI. Let's go down to Control Center. Click on that and scroll down. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up more bars. These quick bars, you're going to need plenty of them. So what you want is to enlarge this number to 4 or 5 or whatever you see that you feel that you're going to need in the future. I, th I say 4 just so you can have it nice and organized. You can also lock the bar right here if you ever need to. And the other thing that we might want to do is go to equipment menu. In this game, you could run with different gear. You know, in World of Warcraft, you have the transmogrification where you can transmog your gear to look like another piece of gear but retain the stats of that one gear. Well, on here, in order to be able to do something similar to that, it's a lot more, I think it's a little bit more of a simple and elegant solution because it offers you more options. And not only that, it it makes it so you don't have to be spending money all the time in order to transfer the looks of your character. All you want to do is enable the social tab and it's under equipment menu. Also, I like to turn off the helmet. And if I'm going to be naming the shortcuts here because I don't feel like hunting around for these things. If you want to, you can just hover over it and then you'll see the description of what it is. But if you hit control and one, it'll bring up your wear menu on here the these are all the things that you could use for your weapons your belt uh, we'll go into that later on cloth this is where all your armor is going to be at and then eventually you'll get some implants that you'll make for your character which oh there's a ton of them <laughs> that's all i can say there is a ton of them um and that's going to go towards boosting up your character stats and skills but that is for another portion probably later in this video so social is where we're talking about. We can put armor there, we can put equipment there, and we can replace the looks of our current gear on here. Keep the stats of the main gear that we're wearing, but however, place the looks that we want on there, and that'll always have priority over that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is drag this down. Here's how I like to set up the UI for now. It works pretty good for me. And now do know, I, am, I just came back to this game recently because I wanted to try it out. I heard they made all these changes and I was really excited about seeing what they were. And so far I've seen some really fantastic changes that they made and hopefully they can continue to do so in the future and streamline certain portions of the game. And hopefully if they do, which they have been talking about it for years, but they seem to be getting ever closer to it, which is to update the engine with a new engine, one from Age of Conan, which is not the newest engine around, but it's definitely a whole lot newer than what this engine is and it can have more access to current graphical features and gpu sets and cpu processors than well this one so we can get a direct uh performance in our performance increase okay so the next thing is these are your different like start combat you can access that by also pressing q targeting something and pressing q or clicking that i personally like to use keybind so i take that off this is your walk i really don't see a point in having that and you can always access that by hitting control two and that'll bring up all your actions that you can do 
and it'll unlock different actions based on the weapons that you have equipped. Okay, so let's take sit down because you could use that with X instead. Follow, don't need that right now because I'm not multi-boxing. And here we can just open this up and then slide this right here and then make sure to tab that on. Okay, first things first, how do you heal? You're gonna need to know this. You're gonna use your health and nano charger. First, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna target yourself and then you're gonna right click this or you can just press it when it's on your quick bar. You can use that out of combat and you can use the health and nano stim when in combat, but it's much less heal. And then finally, this belt here. We need to use this belt in order to increase the amount of NCU we have. What is NCU? NCU allows you, the more NCU you have, the more memory you, can, you have. The more memory you have, the more buffs you can have active on your character at any given time. It's very important, especially when you're trying to twink your character. But if we try to put it on, we see your computer literacy is required to be at least 20. Well, that takes us to the next big portion of this game. If you press U, it comes up with your skills menu. That's your available improvement points. Now, this is a huge thing and a very huge separation between other MMORPGs. Because you can have two people who are fixers, but yet they can be tailored slightly different or even significantly different between two classes between the two same classes so first things ability every single skill you have just about every single one is reliant and dependent upon these abilities right here between your strength stamina sense agility in intelligence and psychic those are some of the things that you're gonna have to concentrate on boosting up in order to free up more points on the other one or even to increase the cap at which you can maximize that skill so for starters i heavily recommend that you go with full stamina no matter what class you are you're going to need this intelligence and then go down to body and defense and increase body development and nano pool that's going to give you more health a significant health boost and it's also going to give you a mana boost or nano pool boost if you will and then I suggest you raise whatever weapon that you currently start off with, that skill. You try to raise it so that way you can actually hit things. So let's boost that. And ranged init. There's ranged init, melee init, which is initiative, and nano init. What those do is allow you to cast or attack more sooner, more quicker. Alright, finally we want to go to specials. I'm going to need burst. And then exploring. This game is also very different from other games in that it allows you to increase your run speed. Where in World of Warcraft, you have to use an ability to cause you to run faster for an, a, a designated amount of time. This one, on the other hand, you can choose to make your character faster over time. Some professions and certain classes can attain that much easier than others. I'm going to boost that. Fixers, by the way, are fantastic for it. In, in case you've noticed, some skills are green or teal, and other ones are light blue, and other ones are dark blue. What that essentially means is the dark blue ones are going to cost you more in order to be able to level them up, and I believe, based on your class, it'll allow you to level up that skill either easier or more difficult. Like, um, it'll cost you more... Instead of being able to increase it 3 points, you can now increase it 5 points per max, per level. So that's something that you'll want to take into consideration when you're building your spec and when you're building your class. And if we when in doubt, look at guides online. There's tons of them. However, you generally want to hover around the ones that are friendly to your class. But never assign all your points immediately. Try to keep them saved up. Only use what you need. That way you give yourself options in the future. Okay, so we have run speed maxed out we're going to increase computer literacy now if we try to use that belt again we can't get to 11 computer computer literacy and see this is where anarchy online system of twinking and buffing comes into play they give you a nano program it's a composite one where originally they would only last about four hours long now or actually excuse me before there wasn't even any composite ones you would have to individually get one to increase all of these skills concealment perception break and entry computer literacy first aid treatment and all that and they will only last for about 30 minutes and it would take up more ncu and they would take you longer to execute them but now you can actually use this one and it immediately lets you last for eight hours originally they had it for four or 30 minutes individual then they made the composite ones and it was four and now it's eight so that's fantastic 
So th this basic principle is going to continue to follow you throughout your entire experience of the game. In that you're going to always want to buff up your abilities one way or another through other classes or through your own usage or a combination to make sure that your character class can do a lot more than what he normally could handle at his current level. Let's put on the glasses. And before we put on the weapon, let's take a look at the specials it may have. Here it tells you its damage range, it tells you its DPS, and its attack speeds, and it tells you which slot it goes into, and importantly it tells you also the specials that you have. So that's something that you're going to want to know, because when you put it on, take a look at this. It unlocks that special in the actions menu, and now you can pull out burst and use it in combat here. Alright, so... How do we put this belt on? Let's buff ourselves up and notice now we're at 31. Now we can put the belt on. Perfect. And that basic concept is what's going to happen throughout this entire game. You can put on this backpack and I recommend it at first because it gives you 10 health and 10 nano. But you'll be replacing it with the back piece that we'll be doing a mission for later. Which if it's, it's an entirely optional quest that you could have missed and it's a fantastic back piece. Okay, let's close all this junk up, and let's go ahead and close that. That is unnecessary for now. Let's talk to this guy. I'm not going to read any of the quests. I'm going to try and skip through that and even edit this video to make it more shorter and concise because this can take a while. When we first start off, the first thing we're going to do is kill these, these little droids here. But unfortunately, everybody and their mothers is doing this right now, and they have to show up. Ooh. Ah, you ain't taking nothing, son. I got you. Now we have to keep looking around, wait for one to spawn. See, this is... Normally, there's not that many people, but there seems to be a lot of people coming back to this game and trying it out as they keep tr sending out their emails. I mean, it did get me back, I'll tell you that, to try it out. Man, this guy's a baller. Got that one. We're getting closer. Come on, we're gonna get this. There we go, we're done. Nah, I was going to say something, but forget it. Alright, so now you talk to this guy as quickly as possible. Get this done. I mean, you don't have to rush, but I'm going to try and get it done as quickly as possible. Anyway, we're going to come down here and talk to this other fool. Now, what we need to do here is put out one of these fires with the fire extinguisher that he's going to give us. Of course, we may have to kill this stupid robot first before he talks to us because he's a coward like that. Alright, talk to him, get the item, get the quest, and to pick up items and use them here, you just left click and then right click over the object you want to use it, but make sure you're in distance or else you may delete the item, or it may ask you to delete the item. Alright, let's hand him this and complete the quest, but before we run off, this is another optional thing, and before we, I even get into that, if you notice, anybody who has a quest, their name is in blue. Whereas regular NPCs are in white like that. That's something new that they added, I think, in this expansion pack, whereas before they didn't. So, let's talk to him about the workers. And it doesn't go away, so once you complete the quest, it's not like it unchecks and that's it. There's no exclamation mark. Or in this case, blue, it turns back to white. It should, but they didn't implement that. Alright, so when we talk to him, we're going to say, okay, let's heal one of these dock workers. You just go into your menu, target one, and right-click this. And the reason you're doing this is because not only are you going to get XP and you're going to get money, but the big reason also is because you're going to get some more med kits in case you need them. I healed him. Okay, fantastic. He wants this thing back. And look at that. It helps us get to a level much sooner than normally. So once we level up, you're going to notice that your abilities and all of these things are now the caps have raised and you can start applying points where needed. And again, I recommend that body development and nano pool, stamina, and intelligence. Because it doesn't matter which class you are, you're going to have to put that up there as high as you can. Range weapons, let's go with submachine guns. And then range specials, burst, exploring, let's increase run speed. And oh, in case you want to put more points, like if you notice, instead of having to click individually or hold it, what I do is hold shift and press the plus, and it assigns the maximum amount of points I can assign to that skill. Save. Look at that health increase right there. Let's heal up. Now talk to this fool. Okay. They need a bioanalyzing computer. 
You don't need to find it. All you need to do is kill seven of these creatures. And that's it. It assigns it to you or it gives it to you. You can pick up the armor. I, re I recommend that you pick up everything that you possibly can. Just due to the fact that you could sell it because you're going to need as much money. Oh, and if you see one of these robot junk, pick one up because you're going to need it for the following quest, for the crafting one. But you're going to need as much money as you can get in this game in order to be able to survive. You know, you don't, you want to be self, you want to be self-reliant. You want to be independent. You don't want to be just begging people for money. And in this game, it's been particular importance because you have to buy your abilities, your nano programs from vendors and stuff. It's unlike World of Warcraft nowadays where you, they hand it to you for free and they keep upgrading it over time. It doesn't do that in this game. It's more like the original World of Warcraft where you would have to go back to the trainers and train up your stuff. Okay, so we should only need about one more. Alright, there we go. Now, sometimes you'll see this mech bot right over here. Sometimes he's over here and he'll have like a force field around him. And what that indicates is... Let me see. I don't need anything that's here, really. Take that submachine gun. Might need it. Sometimes people just leave it like that so you can pick up items that they don't need. But if you see something like that, pick up everything. I have other characters, so I don't obviously need the money as bad. I have a way of making money in the game, which I may make a video on that if I continue playing the game. Or maybe if I don't. <laughs> Okay, give him the bioanalyzing computer. Check that. Now, she's going to send you off on another mission. What you want to do is click on the surveillance droid that's along this road right here. And then you're going to right click the item in your inventory. Okay, so there he is down there. And we're going to right click on this as soon as we get up to him. Oof, you start off slow in this game, man. But later on, you become a lot faster. Especially as a fixer. Actually, I, you know, I want to go back, but it's I, I need to go in this direction. Oh, and if you notice, World of Warcraft, again, I reference that game a lot because it's like the English language. It's spread throughout the planet, and it's like the most common language you could use to talk to within, like, uh, like for instance, in China, they had these different racial, uh, different people from different portions of China, and they were trying to communicate to do this one raid. And the common language that they used amongst each other was English. Whereas everybody around there was from China, but they have many different ways or languages over there from what I understand, many different versions. So they were using that as a universal thing. So that's kind of what I do for a lot for MMORPGs because gamers will understand. Most likely you've had contact with World of Warcraft. But in that game, if you hold the right mouse button and you move, immediately your character recenters in the back, which is really nice. This game doesn't feature that. Instead, if you press numpad 5, it'll reset it to the rear. Hey, at least there's an option there for it. Again, when you get into a game like this, you have to realize you're getting into an old game. Alright, now here's one of the optional quests that you should absolutely do to get a nice back piece of gear. In fact, you get three of them. So depending on the class and depending on the build that you're trying to work with, it gives you those options. You're going to want to talk to Desmond Kalitri here. And he's going to have some work for you, which essentially at first is going to get him a Bronto burger. So now we're a waiter. Wish you could just like kill him at the end, but whatever. Um, you run over here to this little, I don't know, this little airplane that's being held down. It's like a little blimp type thing with a little, I don't know. Anyway, you talk to him. You don't even need to ask him anything. Uh, you just buy this Bronto burger and in case you're wondering how you can see more items at one go drag this little bar over here down and now you can see more it, it comes out to be really helpful later on in the game when you eventually get to the actual shops and you have tons of nano programs and stuff like that to buy all right so after this uh, and if you want to see your mission objectives hit control 4 and this will come up and now you can track your objectives, your quests, much easier. I like to close it though. I'm not using it. I just like my clean UI, you know, as clean as possible. That's how I like it. Alright, hand him the Bronto burger so you can get nice and fat. Actually, we need to... 
Oh, okay, we already got it. We need to kill these two workers over here. Trying to exercise their freedom and their rights. Get out of here. Just get your heartbroken sign out of here. Look at him. He's trying to hit me with a stick, man. With a sign. Come on, man. Fight me like a man. Even though you're a uni. Somehow. Alright, we're done with that. Now we talked to him. And I took care of the protesters. And now we need to take care of this other guy. But that's totally an optional quest. That if you just stick to the main one. And you're like, okay, we're done. Well, let's leave. You'll have bypassed this and lost a very valuable back piece. Three valuable back pieces that you could have gotten. And back pieces aren't exactly the most easiest things to come by in this game. So it, it's really going to affect your character not having that. Wow. One shot? Dang. You could pick up the armor, but it's not really going to matter. Just pick it up so you can sell it. Because... We're going to be buying some newcomer armor. That's going to be much better than any other armor that you can get in this in this place through killing mobs. Hand him this thing. And then go on to do the next portion of the mission, which is kneecapping, kneecap, knee breaker. There's a dude you need to kill over here. He dies really quick. And the, the easier you kill him, the quicker you kill him, uh, the less chance he has of spawning an ad that you'll have to deal with. There we go. He couldn't spawn anything. That's why I love that burst ability. Oh, nice. You definitely want to keep an eye out for rings. There could be a very good ring that gives you plus one to all your nano skills. It's very, very nice. Okay, where's that ring? Oh, nice. Three damage or one, one, one damage. Okay, so these are the back pieces that I was talking about that are absolutely fantastic. Let's look at one of them. Not only do they give you all this armor... But on top of that, it modifies your add-all offense on this particular one. Which I believe your add-all offense, if I remember correctly, increases your attack power or attack bonus. Let me see what's it called. Yeah, your attack rating. And the higher your attack rating, the better chances you have of landing your shots, if I remember correctly. So we're going to put this one on. However, I don't really want to look like a pimp. So instead, what we're going to do is take advantage of that social slot. We're going to take this guy off. Look at that. I put it in the wrong slot. I was supposed to put that in my back piece. So we're going to grab this piece because it looks much cooler. And there you go. Now we can have the looks of this armor, but the stats of that other one. And uh, this one right here, what it essentially is, is more of your tank type armor because it gives you an add-all defense of 5. And this other piece right here, the one I'm using for social, is more based for nano ca uh, classes. Because it reduces their nano cost. So that's really useless to me, so I am going to use this other one instead. Alright, and this thing I'm going to save it for later. Maybe I might want the looks. Let's grab this, drag that out. It saves your, for the most part, it saves your window settings. So you might want to adjust it how you want and it'll retain that. Okay, so let's go talk to Alex. Alright, we have that taken care of. Now she's going to teach you on how to use a personalized robot brain. What that essentially is, it's trying to introduce you into the basics of how to craft an object in this game. Now, this game is very deep. When it comes to crafting, where you'll need to know how to do certain things in this proper order, and you'll need different items, and it's integrated into the game world, it's very deep and complex. You can t take a look at some websites that explain to you how to build certain items. It could be very deep. So if you like crafting, this game is really going to make you happy, I think. And what we're going to need is the bioanalyzing computer, this master comm, and a screwdriver. Buy them, and then from there... You can hold shift T to bring up your trade skill kit. Now your trade skill kit is basically a finer way of controlling the outcome of the result of the product that you're going to make. If you're going to put an implant, you could change the quality level of the implant under certain conditions to either go higher or lower depending on what you need within a certain variance anyway. Well for this, you can place this or actually before we do any of that, what we need to do is grab this. 
the target and grab the screwdriver, put it here, and the result is going to be that. And then we can build it. Now, instead of doing that, there is a more shortcut way that more advanced players, excuse me, will do it, will use. And what that is, is they'll grab this object, hold shift, and then right click there. Actually, I did it in the wrong order. Because the order is very important in this game. Grab this, right shift, and then right click into that. And you've created the object. And that's the basics of actually putting an item together in this game. Okay, so you talk to her and you just turn in the brain. She wants to take a look at it and see, hey, did this guy screw up or not? Can you teach me? Oh, no, no, no. Don't press that again. <laughs> It'll get you stuck in a loop. You'll be doing that, but you won't be getting rewards. Don't think you can cheese it. Alright, and some of the advantages of doing that is, one, we got that one item that gave our sense of three. You never know when you might need that. However, the big one is this... Um, is this composite trade skill expertise so if you are a person who wants to get into trade skill this is going to be a fantastic buff that you'll be taking advantage of throughout your whole entire tenure playing this game so let's talk to this dude now can we learn this yet not yet we'll just keep that and put it to the side for now heard you need help so get to it what he's going to essentially do is have you get a lock pick and then he's going to teach you how to use that lockpick, which is very simple. You just pick up the lockpick and right click on the object you want to pick. That's it. Of course, there will be lockpick checks to see if you have the skill. But even then, if you just do it enough times, it only affects the dice roll. It really doesn't say yes or no, you're going to be able to use this object. So you come in here, buy it, and take a look at this. <laughs> Vacuum pack the lockpick. Oh, nice. They didn't want any fingerprints. They didn't want to get blamed for that one. All right, so let's bring this out. Move that over here. Okay, when you come into this spot here to do your lock picking, there may be a dog. Let's see. Yeah, there's a dog in there. So hit H and your character will begin sneaking. And you're going to use that to get by him. Have this open and ready. So that way when you get to the chest over there, you can immediately grab it and right click. Because it only takes him seconds to notice you. Like that. He already noticed me. I'm, You know I'm half tempted to kill that dog. Because you can actually. I've seen people do it. Let's try again. Can't believe I failed in that. That's pathetic. Such a terrible gamer. All right, there we go. We open it up. Now, he's going to detect you either way, so you can just run out of there. Now, you'll go back to this guy. This one is part of the main quest that you're going to do to get out of here. All right, talk to this fool. Tell him you did it. He's going to want four objects instead of the other people who wanted just one or two. And you'll give him this, this, that, and also your chip. What we're essentially doing storyline-wise is setting up the chip so that way we can be have an ID in this place. And we can actually live here. <laughs> Guy loves this game, but it's too old now. Yeah, it is very old. Hopefully they'll update that engine. That's one thing I am I have no delusions of. Some people will be like, oh, it just looks fantastic. Uh, no, it looks very bad and very clunky. And I can't say that everyone is going to be able to, to do this. They, they just won't be able to. Before we go talk to Sarah Green, let's go and take a look at the nano programs. Personally, me, I could play, I could play Minecraft. It won't bother me. You know, I can look past the graphics if the game is good underneath it. Okay, well, I'm going to have to cut in here and we're going to go ahead and leave the video off here and we'll continue from this point onward because we're running up to 40 minutes and um, well we're just running out of time okay I'll catch you on the next video and I hope that this helped you and gave you a look at the new starting area but there's more to come so stay tuned